We're going to move on to uh, Universal <laughs> Service Fund. <laughs> Speaking of taxes, right? Right. So, uh, you know, this is this is the thing in which, you know, Casey, I didn't um, I didn't tell you this, but I am desperate for someone to explain to me the difference between a fee and a tax, uh, aside from it being whatever the judge doesn't want it to be like, yeah. you know, <laughs> flipping a coin. Um, but the, the short story is Universal Service Fund. Uh, there's been multiple lawsuits. We've talked about this. Congress told the Federal Communications Commission, figure out how to accomplish these goals serving these populations. I'm not going to get too deep into it, uh, but there is a fund and the Federal Communications Commission handed off administration of that to a uh, different entity called USAC, the Universal Services Administration Company. And, um, and that company makes decisions as to how much to assess companies providing certain kinds of services to pay for other things that Congress told the FCC to do. And that whole setup has been being being tested in the courts. And generally the courts have been like, yeah, it seems all right. And uh, Congress gave enough uh, leeway, but there's several different questions to be resolved. And the fifth circuit was like, no, we want to burn it all down. Um, Casey, you can that's fill in. No, I think that's really good. It was in the fifth circuit. So the sixth circuit and the 11th circuit and the DC circuit um, heard cases brought by uh, an organization called consumers research. And it's an ideological wow. organization. Um, <laughs> And uh, all of those courts said, you know, it's okay. We're, we're, we're okay with it. Um, universal service uh, contribution uh, is a fee, not a tax, as we and other courts have said for quite some time. Fifth Circuit hears it. And they said, no, you know what? We're going to ignore uh, those other courts. We're going to ignore um, a lot of past uh, decisions and precedent. And we feel like the universal service contribution is, in fact, a tax. Uh, and that uh, the FCC uh, is uh, in violation of the Constitution because uh, it amounts to an improper delegation of the taxing authority to the FCC without, an, quote, an intelligible principle. There aren't enough uh, you know, guidelines there for how the FCC could administer this so-called tax. And it goes another layer, all according to the Fifth Circuit, because the FCC then improperly delegates the operation of this to USAC, the Universal Service Administrative Company, who, uh, according to the Fifth Circuit, is a private company that has an interest in increasing the tax. <laughs> and on top of that, USAC delegates the determination of the amount of the tax to the private telecommunications carriers that are assessed it because they have to report their revenues, right? And, and say how much they're going to be contributing. So the fifth circuit put all of that together in a extraordinarily long opinion, which is very dense as a legal matter. It's, it's pretty tough to get through. Um, and uh, said, if a no, lawyer they're... saying it's tough to get through, I have problems for a regular person it is. trying to get through this. It is, <laughs> it is, it is really tough. They went, uh, you know, full bore. They went down and talked about everything that was wrong with the unit before they even got to the, the legal parts of it. They went through and said, universal service is terrible, fra fraud, uh, you know, waste, abuse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just, you know, it was written, um, like I said, it's a very ideologically tinged decision in a lot of ways. Um, so, it, it, you know, pretty compelling dissent. Uh, I would say it was a 9-7 decision. It was the full Fifth Circuit on Bonk decision. Mm. The panel decision had already uh, decided it was okay, and the whole Fifth Circuit heard it, and 9-7 decision decided it wasn't. So, uh, you know, they said, the universal service contribution uh, methodology is is unconstitutional, um, and and that's pretty much it. Now, they they remanded it to the FCC. It, it doesn't really immediately change anything. So ISPs, it doesn't mean you have to stop, you know, reporting universal service and all of that. Uh, it doesn't mean that the high cost fund is going to stop, you know, and support through the high cost fund and E rate or anything like that is going to stop immediately. It's going to be appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will almost certainly hear it. Um, a decision, uh, you know, could be made, assuming they get, you know, their writ of certiorari in, uh, you know, pretty pretty soon and everything that, that, you know, you're looking at middle of next year, June, at the end of the Supreme Court's right before they go in recess in June. Um, I've seen a number of predictions about what the Supreme Court could do with this. 
Uh, I think it's a bad decision in the Fifth Circuit I, as a as a legal matter. Um, the opinion is, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't really pay much attention to precedent. It's logically suspect. <laughs> the Supreme uh, Court's going to love it. <laughs> well, they might. No, and this me, Supreme me, Court, right? I mean, right? No, and I, I mean, like it's, it's one an of those ideological where... decision, and this is an ideologically driven Supreme Court. Right. And, and the, the thing is that is that is not that the Supreme Court makes all of its decisions along predictable ideology. It, and that's in some ways harder. It's less predictable. But uh, before we take uh, I want to get comments from folks. But first, I want to know the same thing that always comes up, which is I feel like for people to understand the importance of this. Basically, every single company that serves rural customers um, gets support from the high cost fund, more or less. You know, like some a lot of the electric cooperatives may not uh, now, uh, a lot of the WISPs may not, but the telephone companies, hundreds upon hundreds of companies, some are family owned, some of them are corporate, they have loans that are dependent on these revenues to pay them off for many years into the future. So this is a huge freaking deal if the courts were to invalidate it and force the FCC to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, the telecom industry just sent a letter or, or posted a letter, uh, you know, saying, you know, to Congress saying after this decision, this fiscal decision, that imploring Congress to do something, imploring Congress to take action, because what would undo this decision is if Congress effectively, you know, ratified what the FCC's approach has been over the last several years. They could do that relatively simply, but you also, at the same time, have this policy debate that's been going on now for a couple of years about the problems with the Universal Service Fund and the, and the skewed contributions. There's a Universal Service Working Group. And so, you know, U.S. Telecom and others are, are saying this is an opportunity for Congress to fix this and fix this issue. The big, the big incumbents, the big carriers, that you know, huge providers don't want the Universal Service Fund to just go away. You know, I can't think of very many people who want Universal Service Fund to go away, except for the Federalist Society. You know, right? I mean, the burn it down people, and and so it's a real problem. You know, it, con congressional action is going to happen in some way or another. And then meanwhile, you have the Loper Bright decision, which makes that very difficult too. So it's a challenging how does, situation. How does this play into USF reform? Like, I mean, because you have USF reform happening on one level and then you have saying it's unconstitutional on the other. So where do you think this is going to meet right. at and, the end well, of the day? This is, I mean, we, we have talked about this a little bit and Casey, I, I'd love to get your comment if I just provide a little bit of background, which is mm -hmm. The FCC can act on USF reform without further congressional authorization. Mm -hmm. However, if the FCC wants to increase this fee <laughs> or tax um, to uh, Facebook and Google and others, which is broadly popular, um, then Congress would have to act. And so there's a question of like, if there's going to be something that touches USF, then Congress will have to decide the scope of it. Does it just want to mm -hmm. basically say the FCC can do what it's doing? Or does it want to provide additional different direction for allowing for greater um, uh, uh, building the base of, of contributions and things like that? So Casey, and then maybe, and then uh, Doug after that. No, that's, that's a pretty good synopsis, you know, and, and this recent, the Loper Bright decision, you know, a few weeks ago in validating Chevron, made the uh, the made it much more difficult for the FCC and Congress for that matter to effectively reform universal service. If if Congress is going to reform the universal service fund, then under Loper Bright, they need to be really detailed in the statute about how to do it. The FCC mm -hmm. is very limited in my opinion now about what they can do to effectively reform it with because they'll get sued based on the Loper Bright decision. Mm -hmm. So you have this reform, need for reform, and now you have a circuit court decision saying the whole thing is invalid. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, it's a really hard situation. Okay, I do have you one know? last yeah. legal beagle question for you. Supreme Court <laughs> says we're not going to accept it. We're just going to let the Fifth Circuit decision stand. Can a different circuit be like, you know what, we we overrule the Fifth Circuit? Like how, not at that or, or can the, the FCC Supreme... just not tax within the Fifth Circuit jurisdiction? Like how does this all come together? Now, if there's a split in the circuits like this, generally it's going to, nothing's going to happen. It'll be stayed until they, you know, get it to the Supreme Court. Um, so the Supreme Court will almost certainly, the Supreme Court will almost certainly take it then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a few comments on it. One is, first off, electric cops mostly all get it. This is what pays our DOF. Can you imagine? Right. If, I think. It, I mean, I think the electric imagine? cops like only like a quarter of them have our DOF, but yeah, but still a lot. A lot of them do, and and 
so if next year they invalidated this, folks wouldn't get their last five years of RDOT payments. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the bank loans based upon that and everything. I mean, this has, <clears throat> the big companies are a favor of it because they all collect a lot. This is used to pay broadband bills at schools. All the big carriers get a lot of that money because I mean, it goes to Comcast and Charter and AT&T and everybody else, right? Yeah, nobody wants to see this go away. So, um, you know, it pays for rural health connections. I mean, it pays for the stuff that is ex that's expensive. Travis has his hand up. We found one person who wants it to go away. I mean, I don't find it elegant. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to, I'm going to pre-agree with Travis here. <laughs> Whoa. I just, you I agree with Travis on something? <laughs> well, I knew you were all going to be in favor of this, so I figured I would play the other side of the coin. Have you ever managed a USF, you know, being a USF provider? Surprise, surprise. It's an absolute nightmare. Oh, it's agreed. a paperwork nightmare. Absolute, yes. Absolutely yeah. agree. <laughs> typical government program, we call it the leaky bucket over here, or my, my buddy Jay and I do, where, I mean, there has been, since 2018, I think there's been 18 different rate increases or charges and fees and trying to understand how it works and then when you're when you're when you're trying to pay fees on circuits that go you know interstate fees how does all that work i mean you need to have a full-time staff so this really benefits the big guys mr mitchell but for the little guys this is a terrible program the way that it's executed well i it benefits so the lawyers yeah. I mean, I'll, go, yeah, yeah. I'll go I'll go further than that, Travis. Like and the lawyer said that. And the lawyer said it benefits the lawyers. Yeah, it's shocking. I mean, <laughs> it needs to be fixed. It needs to be simplified, yeah. right? I mean, well, it was designed so, yeah. for phone service. It was I mean, not designed for broadband. It's pigeonholing terms that were used in the Telecom Act of 96, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was terrible timing to have a Telecom Act into you know, there needs to be uh, you know, omnibus telecom reform legislation of some kind. That's not going to happen as far as I can tell. So the reason, I mean, Travis is totally right. It's a, it's a nuanced, difficult program to deal with. It's expensive to comply with. It's, it's hard to get right. Um, you know, it's yeah, no good, but it's, a, they it's don't necessary. Share, it's super opaque for those of us who are trying to figure out like what are schools paying and, and we're trying to figure out just how much the taxpayers um, or the fee payers were getting ripped off by uh, incumbents who were just way overcharging because the, um, the incentive mismatch for E-rate is awful. And it's really, it's frustrating, frankly, like it's, it's not a good program from the point of view of, of the ultimate way to, to benefit something, to be fiscally responsible responsible as well as to be transparent and for small companies to operate and things like that. And yet it is better than the alternative of not having one, I think. Uh, and so, you know, to some extent, if this was a way to force USAC and the FCC, uh, and I say I should say specifically the FCC to take its job seriously, that would be great. Uh, but I'm afraid that's not necessarily, uh, you know, I just feel like the burn it all down people are often surprised mm. at just how uh, much happens when you burn it all down, and and just how you have not taken a you have not taken notice of the benefits of a deeply flawed system. Hold on, did we agree on something? Yeah, I mean, I think we're mostly in agreement on it that like we should yeah. be doing better. Right. I'm really mad they're getting rid of it. Then I'm going the other side. Then, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm and I'm in the middle. Remember last yeah. week I said we should stop paying for school broadband connections. Boy, did oh. Gigi ever give me a look? Remember? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, so it's worse. Well, Chris, Chris might right. This might be Chris's you know educated version. This will be my uneducated version. It de incentivizes schools from ever looking for a deal. They don't care. They're like, oh, it's E rate. Uh, they don't care what it costs. It is that is the case in many districts, and it's frustrating. Um, so uh, I I would agree with that. On the other hand, um, E rate is also paying for uh, you know the Wi Fi in the schools and things like that that aren't as long term and uh, might need service contracts. So um, I don't want to I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush in, in this case. Um, I there, there are there are abuses. There are definitely abuses, right. but there's also lots of benefit. It's just one of those things you love to hate. So let's do it. Let's do it. Jay yep. said, just make it easy, make it a fixed rate. And we don't have, we don't have to chase around every week what, it, what the new version is and how to pay, how to pay it. 
Now, the simplest approach is what is, is, is Jay trying? Is Jay trying to put Casey out of work here? I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, it's, it's it's the inferior <laughs> versions of Casey that are under threat, not Casey. <laughs> but but I, I do have a question on this. Do you think the ILEX who are dependent on this USF funding are like shaking? Like, well, because what if it goes away? Right? What's happening to some of those carriers who do get it? And a lot of rural carriers do get USF funds. Are, do we hear any of the what they are saying about this? Because I haven't heard anything. They yet, want Congress but... to do something. They want Congress to, yes. to reform the FCC and bring in the content providers, bring in the Netflixes and, and quote, pay their fair share. Um, you know, they say, well, if you if you if you reform universal service by assessing by bringing broadband into it, then you're just causing consumers to pay that that additional mm -hmm. fee. Consumers are going to pay the fee anyway. Look, if you, if you, if you put it on Netflix or whomever, then your Netflix bill is going to go up. You know, it, it, right? So, mm -hmm. I think the the argument is uh, so. Casey is so mad he's not going to listen to the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you know. I, I do want to say that, like, I feel like. Um, the argument of, of increasing it on Netflix and others is in part that at that point, you're talking about an increase on a monthly household bill across everything by like a buck or two rather than potentially three or four. Um, in other ways, and we've, I've talked about this in community broadband bits. If you look back at the show with uh, Mike Romano, uh, we went through uh, a lot of this in community broadband bits, uh, for different scenarios. So, um, and I, I would say that one of the things that I would urge Congress to do, since I'm so influential with, with those folks, the 535 people hanging on my every word, um, would be if you're going to assess it, let's assess three big guys or four big guys. Don't assess, you know, like all these small companies and force them to pay in, uh, set the limit very high. So we're hitting Amazon, Facebook, Google, maybe Netflix, Apple, Microsoft, perhaps, but beyond that, nothing like just keep it simple and keep it high level. Yeah. Well, because where do you break it off for content providers? It could go way down the hill. Revenues that are very high. The content providers are already paying though. Right. But I, the question, so Netflix and, uh, and uh, like Amazon are not paying into USF today. Sure they are. No, they're not. They, they buy transport circuits to bring if, their content around the nation. And, and, and you have, have USF attached to that. But not paying for USF, though. They're not, like, they're paying... So, yeah. so like they're they're paying for some services. I think the argument is, and I and I if I had to guess, I mean, you could tell me I'm wrong. Um, it would be a first time, obviously, but um, <laughs> but over time they're doing less and less of leasing of those sorts of transport circuits and right. building their own fiber. Most of their traffic has to be going over their own networks internally now before it hits no. the others. No, no. no they don't. I'm they wrong. don't. They no, do no. not have nationwide. Sir, they do not have nationwide. They buy hey guys, guys. circuits. We just heard Chris Mitchell say he was wrong for the first time just now. My confidence is shattered. I don't know what to do. I, can someone okay. else end the show for me? And, and, I would, <laughs> and I would argue they're paying more all the time because they're buying more and more and more circuits to bring because they're, right. they're, the usage of their content is going up and up and up. I'm so confused. I feel like Facebook is building networks freaking everywhere. And, and Amazon, they are they're not. building... No, no, they're no, building. No. They're, they are putting some money into underwater cables to get the yeah. art, but they're not building much in the U.S. No. Facebook was just building through West Virginia. I mean, I just like seven years ago, and they like did this whole thing about how they were going to bundle the dark fiber and make it available to ISPs and and stuff like that. Like, um, but they and didn't I, and really, do it. Like Arcadian Infracom like is out there building uh, for these data centers from data center to data center. Lumen is okay. Well, here I here I am. So if Lumen's building one, of, so Lumen's stock price just went up again. I don't know if anyone else is paying attention. I don't know. I was just coincidence. Hey, hey, um, hey, hey! I just want to make. I have, we have to ask a question before you go any further. Are you upside down on Lumen still, or are you still doing pretty well? <laughs> I think I bought it at five. <laughs> <laughs> um they um they um but they just they're doing a bunch of data center stuff now right for um um right. and now so are those new links that if lumen is building are those all assessed under usf yes sure sure because they're interstate traffic yeah mm -hmm. uh, okay yeah you, you would probably be i bet you'd be surprised how much like google right. jay, hold on is. here we go is jay right here because this is this is what i was thinking Dark fiber is, but yeah, that's what they're getting, right? Who's buying a lit circuit from Lumen? No, Chris, they, they just getting, they okay, have, all right, hold on, hold on. Casey knows actually. Chris, Casey, Casey Chris, said Lumen not necessarily, is, and that is lawyer for almost certainly not. <laughs> <laughs>
No, they're, they're my, I don't think they're getting as much dark fiber. They're getting, they're getting transport, you know, to a large extent with the data center circuits in the middle of the Right. Yeah.